friends. I'm Dr. Wilfred Graves Jr. and I would like to welcome you to a new year of online fellowship and learning. Dr. Kenneth Hammonds, Dr. Oscar Owens and I are thrilled that you have joined us this evening. Now some of you have been attending the series Healthy Habits of the Christian Life. If you've done that then you are familiar with how we flow. If you are new to this experience then I want to invite you to visit 3BibleTeachers.com. If you will go to the blog section, you will find a list of videos and homework assignments and uh, other materials that will help you in your Christian walk. Together, the three Bible teachers are communicating God's word in clear, engaging, and practical ways. Our goal is to help you to become a thriving, mature, and fully devoted disciple of Jesus Christ. Now, if you would uh, like to contact the three Bible teachers, I invite you to send an email to threebibleteachers at gmail.com. And if you want to connect with me personally, you can do so through social media or by visiting my website, which is wilfredgraves.org. Now, in this video, I will review the spiritual disciplines that I presented in the 2020 series, Healthy Habits of the Christian Life. Now, spiritual disciplines are regular, intentional practices found in scripture that promote spiritual growth among believers. Spiritual disciplines enable us to carve out space in our lives for Jesus so that we can become more like him. Now, last year I introduced several topics. These are number one, solitude and silence. Number two, a daily diet of God's word. Number three, gratitude. Number four, surrender. Number five, service and secrecy. Number six was a general introduction to prayer. Number seven was the specific spiritual discipline of listening prayer. Number eight, was self-examination. Number nine was confession or agreeing with God. And number 10, keeping a spiritual journal. Once again, to review these topics, I invite you to visit 3BibleTeachers.com slash blog. So let's talk about solitude and silence. These were the first two disciplines that I covered in 2020. Solitude is a state of being alone. Silence is the voluntary removal of noise from our surroundings. Now, the Lord Jesus Christ himself often sought out places of quiet solitude so that he could spend time with the Heavenly Father. And just like our Savior, sometimes we need alone time with God. So I recommend that you dedicate time and space to be alone with God each and every day. Uh, let that time and space be one in which there are no distractions and no noise. As you practice the spiritual disciplines of solitude and silence, you will learn to discern God's voice, to know his will, and also to experience his peace and his wonderful presence. The next topic that I presented was entitled, A Daily Diet of God's Word. Jesus, quoting Deuteronomy 8 and 3, says in Luke 4 and 4, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. The word of God gives us power to live. It is a source of life-giving revelation. Just as natural food provides nourishment for our physical bodies, so the word of God provides essential nourishment to our minds and our spirits. 
I offer a threefold approach to God's word, which will lead to your spiritual growth. Number one, we can hear and obey God's word. Number two, we should read and study God's word. And number three, we need to meditate on and apply God's word. So one, we can hear the word of God. We can hear it taught or preached or read aloud. When we hear the word of God, this builds faith within us. But as James chapter 1 verse 22 tells us, we need to be doers of the word and not hearers only. So we need to respond to God's word with obedience. Number two, we can read God's word devotionally or we can study God's word carefully, also responding to his word with obedience. Every Christian needs a good study Bible and other tools to help with Bible reading and study. You can find many helpful resources in your Christian bookstore, or you can also look online to find all kinds of wonderful resources. And number three, we can reflect deeply on, memorize, and recite. In other words, we can meditate on God's word. We need to read it, and we need to meditate on it so that we can apply it to our daily lives. God's word must be kept continually in our minds, on our lips, and in our actions. Finally, according to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, all scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, for rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Through the Bible, God reveals himself to us. Also through the Bible, we discover God's will. We learn God's ways and we are introduced to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Bible also gives us basic instructions for our daily living. It is indispensable to a healthy spiritual life, one of growth and development. So I pray that you will consume a daily diet of God's word and that you will experience his life giving power each and every day. My next topic was gratitude or thanksgiving. The Apostle Paul said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 18, in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Even though the world is going through turmoil right now, there are many things for which we can be thankful. We can be thankful for God's goodness, his mercy, and his grace, especially the salvation that we have in his son, Jesus Christ. Personally, I'm thankful for my wife and for the members of my family and all of the friends that God has brought into my life. And I'm thankful for a host of other things. I'm even thankful for the trials and tribulations that have helped to shape my character and to uh, bring me to a place of greater maturity. And I'm sure that you can create your own list of things for which you are thankful. Thanksgiving is a worship activity that, that causes us to focus on God and to draw closer to him even in the most difficult times. Thanksgiving will lift us out of depression and, and self-seeking and, and bring us to a place in which we appreciate all that God has done for us. Thanksgiving truly is one of the aspects of Christian maturity. An attitude of gratitude will cure us of self-centeredness and will ultimately lead us to a happier and more fulfilling Christian walk. The next spiritual discipline that I introduced in 2020 was what I call surrender. 
the discipline of surrender. Spiritual surrender is an act of faith by which we devote ourselves entirely to God without reservation, without restraint, and without resistance. God is calling all of us to become followers of Jesus Christ and to surrender ourselves to the Savior's lordship over our lives. In Matthew 16 and 24, Jesus gave us a clear description of discipleship. There he says, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. To deny yourself is to surrender your will and to embrace God's will. To take up your cross and follow Jesus is to put to death your own desires and your own plans and to turn your life completely over to God, accepting his plan for your life. There is no such thing as partial surrender to Christ. We cannot pick and choose the areas of our life that we're going to give over to him and what we're going to control. Jesus Christ wants to be the Lord over what we think. He wants to be the Lord over how we think. He wants to transform our motives and our feelings and our desires and our faulty reasoning. Jesus also wants to be the Lord over our decisions and our actions. Are you wrestling with a sour attitude um, or an unruly tongue or maybe sexual immorality? Are you wrestling with various vices and bad habits? Then it's time to surrender these things to the Lord. There is no form of human brokenness that is beyond God's ability to bring salvation and healing and transformation. So my prayer for you today is that you will experience God's divine power and spiritual victory in every area of your life as you surrender yourself to the Lord. The next two spiritual disciplines that I presented last year were service and secrecy, service and secrecy. Service and secrecy are two spiritual disciplines that help us to focus on other people and to share the love of Christ with them, sometimes sacrificially and sometimes anonymously. The Greek word diakonos, from which we derive the English word deacon, means servant or minister. To serve then is to minister to someone. To serve is to assist someone or to help, care for, or work for a person. To really serve others requires that we see them the way that God sees them. God's love is not based on a person's position in life. He loves everybody equally and he extends grace and compassion to all, even the poor and the helpless in society. When we humbly, selflessly, and sacrificially serve others in the name of Jesus Christ, then we participate with the Lord in his ministry of love and compassion and his great work of salvation in the world. I paired my discussion of service with that of secrecy. Even though service is an important aspect of the Christian life, some people serve so that they will receive approval from other people. That's the wrong motivation. We should not serve to be seen by others. We should serve as unto the Lord. We should serve for the glory of God alone. This is where secrecy can be a helpful spiritual practice. Secrecy is doing good deeds and acts of kindness with no mention of it to others. 
Secrecy involves quietly and faithfully doing the work of God without shouting it from the housetops or uh, letting others know each and every thing that we did. The spiritual discipline of secrecy is a way in which we can be a quiet blessing to others. It is also a way to create a safe space for people to receive without becoming the subject of rumors and gossip. So practicing the spiritual discipline of secrecy is one way of acknowledging that the best approval comes from God rather than from other people. Now, I dedicated two sessions to the topic of prayer. The first session was a general introduction to prayer, and the second section was on the topic of listening prayer. So I want to uh, invite you to, to visit 3BibleTeachers.com slash blog to view all of the material that was presented on prayer. Now, I define prayer as personal communication with God in worship. Prayer is personal communication with God in worship. Prayer enables us to have a vital fellowship with the Father. It also enables us to grow in Christ and to become Holy Spirit empowered servants of God. Through prayer, we glorify God. And in response, God transforms us into the image of his son. Now, because prayer is communication with God, the practice allows us to make contact with him and to discern his will in various situations. Because God is personal, he communicates in ways that we can relate to. God speaks through the Bible. It is called God's word. God also speaks historically in and through the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus is also called the word. God speaks to us through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. The voice of God's spirit has more authority than our natural human thoughts. And what the Holy Spirit has to say will always be consistent with the Bible. God also speaks through the body of Christ. God uses mature believers to communicate his will to us. And God can speak through circumstances. Uh, some things that God does are very creative. I like to call it uh, his putting of his fingerprint on things. God will manipulate the circumstances to let you know what his will is. And also God can speak very dramatically. He could speak audibly if he desires. He can speak through dreams uh, and, and visions and, and, and gifts of the Holy Spirit. But most of the ways that God communicates to us will happen in more ordinary ways as we walk with him on a daily basis. Now, communication requires listening. For there to be genuine communication, we must listen to God. Do you need to hear from God? Then you must assume a listening posture before him. I encourage you each day to quiet your mind and your emotions and relax yourself. Take time to worship the Lord and express your love to him. You may even want to sing and just uh, spend uh, several minutes uh, maybe even an hour in worship before him and begin to think deeply on the words of scripture and to surrender your will to him in prayer. Ask God to, to wash your sins away and to cleanse you from unrighteousness. And once you've done that, receive the forgiveness that God extends to you. Finally, wait on God with expectation. He will respond to you in ways that you will understand. Bible verses may suddenly come to your mind that bring you peace and comfort and, and help or assurance, those things that you have been seeking from God. Or maybe you'll get a flash of insight sometime during the day as you quiet yourself before the Lord. 
or God may send wise counsel your way. Remember, I said that God speaks through his people, so he may send wise counsel your way to help you to discern the course of action to take. Or God can speak in a number of other ways. But my point is that God will definitely speak to us if we will take the time to listen to him. And so may you experience the hearing of his voice on a daily basis. The next spiritual discipline that I covered was self-examination. Self-examination is the study of one's own behaviors and motivations. Healthy self-examination is not, let me repeat, healthy self-examination is not an obsessive preoccupation with personal flaws and weaknesses, but rather Healthy self-examination is a mature assessment of what is truly in our hearts. King David said, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. There are several New Testament passages that encourage self-examination as well. Regular and intentional self-examination is an important aspect of a healthy Christian life. We need this practice to prevent spiritual pride and deception. It's quite easy to uh, convince ourselves that we're better or stronger or smarter or more holy than we really are. Self-examination keeps us honest with ourselves and with God. When we come before the Lord with honesty, humility, and repentant hearts, God will extend his grace to us and transform us by his power. The next spiritual discipline that I covered was confession. To confess in the New Testament means to speak the same thing or to agree. When people confess the Lordship of Christ, they're saying the same thing about Jesus that the Word of God says about Jesus. When people confess their sins, they're saying the same thing about sin that God says about sin. In other words, they are agreeing with God that sin is wrong and offensive to him. And when someone confesses any promise in Scripture, they must be sure that they're saying the same thing about that scripture as the total teaching of the Bible on that subject. The spiritual discipline of confession as I am defining it is the intentional and regular practice of coming into agreement with God. In other words, it is saying the same thing that God says. We need to agree with what God says about himself. We need to agree with what God says about the world in which we live. We also need to agree with God about human nature and what he says about sin and salvation. We certainly need to agree with what God says about his people. The believer has a unique and privileged position in Jesus Christ. And finally, we need to agree with what God says about reality. God has something to say about every aspect of life. We need to agree with him in these areas and we need to say exactly what he is saying. The best way to come into agreement with God is to read and to embrace the word of God. If you want to know what God is saying, then you need to read and embrace the word of God and then say the same thing that the word says. The final spiritual discipline that I covered in 2020 was that of keeping a spiritual journal. A journal is a written record of personal thoughts, experiences, and observations. A spiritual journal helps us to reflect upon our daily lives so that we can clearly discern God's presence in our lives, his guidance, and his various dealings with us. That is, a spiritual journal 
helps us to discern what God is saying and doing in our lives. Now, there's no one way to keep a journal. Journaling is a very personal and uh, intimate spiritual discipline. Some people write every day. Some people write once a week. Um, some people only write during uh, significant events in their lives. Some people don't write at all, but they find creative uh, ways uh, of expression. For example, uh, through pictures or drawings um, or just by using the creativity, they can express certain things that God is dealing with them about. The key to spiritual journaling is for you to discover an approach that helps you to reflect on what God is saying to you and what he's doing in your life. You can really think of journaling as a companion practice to the various spiritual disciplines that we've been learning about. When we pray, we can also journal at the same time. Journaling helps us to keep track of what God is saying to us. When we spend time in God's word, journaling can be an important uh, way to record the things uh, that we're reading or studying or meditating on. In a journal, we can also reflect on things that we're grateful for uh, or anything else of spiritual uh, value. In our class on confession, uh, I encourage you to say the same thing that God says in his word. These statements can be placed in your journal. So journaling then is a simple but powerful practice that can bring tremendous encouragement and insight to the Christian walk. So I highly recommend that you avail yourself of this important spiritual discipline. Well, that concludes my review of the spiritual disciplines that I presented in 2020. I hope that this teaching series has been and continues to be a tremendous blessing to you. I'm eager to hear about your experiences with the material. So let's now move to the live class. God bless you. I'm Dr. Wilfred Graves. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.